Crepes are a French super thin pancake that can be wrapped around dessert filling or breakfast filling and they're really easy to make. You can make savory crepes or sweet crepes. Today we're gonna make sweet crepes and we're gonna use the blender to make it so very easily. But the important thing to remember when you make crepes is that the batter needs to rest for two hours before you actually start cooking. So plan ahead a little bit. You can even make this crepe batter yesterday for crepes today. So first things first, we're gonna need some melted butter for this. You can melt your butter in the microwave or you can melt it in a saucepan on the stove top. While that butter is melting, let's get everything else together. We have some eggs, we have some sugar, we have milk, and I'm gonna use whole milk for this, and we have some flour. What we want to avoid in our crepe batter are lumps. So sift your flour if you want to, or just whisk it in a bowl and break up all the lumps in that flour. When you're satisfied there are no more lumps, the flour's ready to go, but we're gonna start with our liquid ingredients in the blender first. In goes our milk, in goes some sugar, just about half a teaspoon of salt, and our eggs, and our melted butter. On goes the lid, and we're gonna just pulse this together until it's well blended. <laughs> Now that's the most blending we're gonna do because once we add that flour, we're only going to have the blender on for as long as it takes to get that flour incorporated. So well sifted or whisked flour all at one time. Turn it on only as long as you need to get everything incorporated and then stop. So now we're gonna pour this back into a vessel and we're gonna chill it for at least two hours or as long as 48, but no longer than 48. So once your crepe batter has rested for two hours, it's time to make the crepe. So take it out. Now, if you've left this in your fridge for longer than two hours, you're probably gonna need to thin that batter a little bit with a little more milk because the flour will have continued to absorb all of the liquid. Give it a whisk and see how it looks. It needs to be pourable and relatively thin. This looks fine. Now, preheat a skillet. I'm using a 10-inch skillet, but you can use an 8-inch skillet if you prefer. It all depends on what size crepe you're going for in your final version. I'm gonna heat it on medium, medium-high heat right now, and I'm gonna add some butter and melt that butter nicely right in here. Now, I'm melting more butter than I need for my first crepe because I'm gonna go back and use that in between batches. Now, once I have enough butter in there, I'm gonna take a paper towel and just wipe that butter out a little bit giving a nice coating on the bottom of the skillet. Now here's what's gonna make you feel really, really comfortable making crepes. The first one is always a disaster, and it's your special chef treat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure about a quarter cup of batter each time I make a crepe. I'm gonna pour it into this pan. If there's any excess crepe batter in the pan, I'm simply gonna pour it back into the batter bowl. As you pour it into the pan, swirl that pan around to put a nice thin coating on the bottom of the pan. If there's any excess like this, just pour it right back out into the cup. Now, it doesn't take long. You're not walking away while you're making crepes. We're just gonna start watching and looking at the edges of the crepe. If it starts to brown ever so slightly, we're gonna get ready to flip it over. Have a silicone spatula ready to go, and you can start to loosen those edges almost immediately. You can use your fingers if you want to. That's what I do. Lift it up with that spatula until you can grab it. Flip it over and cook the other side. You shouldn't have any browning on your crepe, although if you like more color and you like more flavor, you can go ahead and do so, but it doesn't need to be brown. The second side always cooks faster than the first side, so it's only about 30 seconds in the pan, and then we'll invert this crepe onto a plate. And look how pretty that crepe is. Ready to go now. This one is the first crepe, and it actually turned out okay, but you can always give that a test, you know, to make sure everything's all right and eat it yourself. Time to make the next one. You can go ahead and put some more butter in if you want to, but you may not need any. So about a quarter cup of batter into the pan. Swirl the pan as you pour the batter in to make sure you cover the entire bottom surface. Pour out any excess to ensure that you've made the thinnest crepe possible. And then again, we're just gonna look for those edges to see a little tiny bit of browning start to happen. Loosen them with a spatula, flip it over with your hand, cook the next side for about 30 seconds and invert it onto a plate. You're gonna to continue to make crepes this way until all the batter's been used up. You can make the batter up to 48 hours ahead of time, but you can't really keep the batter for longer than that. So it makes more sense to make all your crepes and then decide to refrigerate or freeze them for a later date. 
If you're gonna do that, make sure you put a piece of parchment between each crepe so they separate more easily later, and then wrap all the crepes together in plastic wrap or in a zipper sealable bag, removing all the air, pop it into your fridge or freezer. Once you've made all your crepes, now comes the fun part to filling it. But let's take a look at what we've done here. We've made beautifully uniformly thin pancakes, and the reason they're so nice like this without holes is because we let the batter rest. If you don't let the batter rest, what you end up with is a lacy crepe, or a crepe with holes in it. These ones are beautiful. So now you can fill it with whatever it is you want to fill. Maybe some chocolate hazelnut spread, maybe some blueberries and bacon and put some maple syrup on top. Right now, I'm gonna go simple. We're gonna put some mixed berries. If you use my technique where you put excess batter in the pan and pour it out, what you're gonna to wanna to think about now is that little extra lip on your crepe, keep that towards you. As we're gonna go ahead here, put some whipped cream, some berries inside our crepe. I'm gonna roll the crepe away from me using this lip to get it over the initial hurdle. Then roll it up, transfer it to a plate. A little chocolate sauce. a little powdered sugar. That's a dessert that's hard to say no to.